Hello aspirants, welcome to daily editorial analysis brought to you by Shankar IS Academy. Today, 4th September, displayed here are the list of articles that we will be discussing. The first article, a carbon credit trading system will help only if it is designed well. This article is taken from the newspaper Live Mint. And the second article, take on challenge of rising income inequality. This article is taken from the Hindu editorial. And without much delay, let's begin our discussion. Before moving to the discussion, we have two important announcements. We know that the prelims of UPSC is getting tougher every year. Therefore, to boost the prelims pressure, the Shankar IS Academy has opened admission for pre-storming UPSC prelims to series 2025 batch 1 and the batch 1 will be started on 6th September 2024. Link for the registration will be given in the description. Do register and boost your UPSC preparation. And the second important announcement is Shankar IS Academy's All India UPSC Mains Open Mock Test 2024 will be started soon. Link for the registration will be given in the description. Do register and boost your UPSC Mains preparation. And without much delay, let's begin with our first article. Look at this newspaper article taken from Hindu, Take on Challenge of Rising Income Inequality. So, this is talking about the income inequality. From the heading itself, we know that. Why we are discussing it? Because after the COVID-19, we can see the there is an exacerbation in the income inequality across the world. So, it's a global challenge currently. So, in this video, we are going to discuss more about this from the main point of view. First, we will try to understand what is meant by income inequality. Income inequality can be simply defined as uneven distribution of income within a population and it is a measure of how much richer the top earners of a country compared to the rest of the population in the country. And the third one is income inequality that is high income inequality in a nation means the wealth of that nation is concentrated in the hands of a few people while the rest of the population is deprived of the development. And now we are going to see what are the key issues behind this rising income inequality. First one is inappropriate wealth distribution and a lack of progressive taxation. So we know how this progressive taxation works like the progressive taxation is proportional to the income of a person. For example, a person is earning 1000 rupees in a month, then his tax will be 10 percentage of his salary. If there is a change, there is a rise in his income from 1000 to 2000, then definitely the, the tax rate will also increase. If this progressive taxation policies are not effectively implemented, then the top earners of the country or the wealthiest population in a country will enjoy the benefit of low tax while the rest of the population, including middle class and the lower class people, will burden with the tax. Therefore, it will ultimately affect their income. And second important reason will be access to education and skill development. That is inequitable access to quality education and skill. So, education and skill are the major components that brings a person to the field of employment. If there is no education and skill development, then there is less employment opportunity. If there is less employment opportunity means there will be low income and if low income means low savings and uh, he can even satisfy his basic needs. And the third is ineffective implementation of labor laws and uh, workers' rights. So, the weak enforcement of the labor laws including inadequate minimum wages uh, will ultimately affect the rights of the workers and therefore there is a high chance the workers are deprived of decent or standard salary. And the next uh, reason will be investment in the infrastructure. Therefore, we know that infrastructure is very essential for the development of a region. If there is less in investment in the infrastructure, then there is less development. Less development means there will be only less opportunity for attracting investments and this will ultimately lead to regional disparities within a country. That means certain areas will be developed and flourish while certain areas will remain underdeveloped. And the next key cause is globalization and the market liberalization. This globalization and the market liberalization has successfully achieved economic growth but it resulted in the concentration of wealth in the hands of a few people and also widened the income gap and therefore it requires a constant and practical policies to ensure that the benefit of the development out of the globalization and market liberalization is reaching every nook and corner of the nation. And the next reason is sectoral shift. For We know that the best example is India. We know that India was an agrarian economy till the end of the last century. But from the end of the last century, we can see a sudden shift from agriculture to service sector. This has deprived development and growth in the agriculture and manufacturing sector of the nation. Coming to the statistics, we will be analyzing how the income inequality existing in regional and gender and the sectoral field. First one is region. According to the study, top 10 percentage of the population holds 57 percentage of national income and it is mainly concentrated in the metropolitan regions of the nation. Coming to the gender perspective, we know that India ranks 129th out of 146 on the Global Gender Gap Index released by World Economic Forum. According to this index, every woman earns only 40 rupees for every 100 rupees earned by 
men and this is shows how the income inequality is existing between gender in a society coming to the income inequality in the sector we we know that agriculture employs 42 percentage of the workforce in the nation but it only contributes to 16 percentage of the gdp and it highlights low productivity and low earning in the agriculture sector now we are going to see the government measures to promote now we are going to see the government measures to reduce the income inequality the first major initiative is direct benefit transfer that uh, that is uh, that is the pension or any other benefits transferred directly from the government to the intended beneficiary so it will helps in reducing leakages and ensures that the subsidies and all other benefits reaches the correct beneficiaries and the second one is pradhan mandri jandan yojana it aims for financial inclusion and also working to ensure that in every household at least one person has bank account therefore it will also eventually helps in reducing leakages next we have the biggest successful scheme of india that is the mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act it provides under days job to rural household and uh, for minimum standard income and uh, recently the government has initiated direct benefit transfer for the workers under the Mahatma Gandhi National R Rural Employment Guarantee Act. And next we have the Skill India Mission. So it targets for the development of skill for creating better employment opportunity for the youth population. And what are the measures can be taken to ensure or to reduce income inequality? First one is implementing effective progressive taxation. Like I said, if we can Im implement the progressive taxation successfully, then the revenue generated out of this taxation can be used to, for improving education, healthcare, infrastructure, and thereby we can reduce the income inequality among the people. And the second one is enhancing education and the skill development program. We can improve the employment opportunity for the people, thereby we can reduce the income inequality. The major scheme is Pradhan Mandri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. 2.0 and uh, next uh, suggestion can be strengthening labor laws this will ensure this will ensure the labor's right and uh, standard income for the working class people and in this area we have code of wages 2019 it aims to standardize wage across sectors of a nation thereby ensures standard living style for the working people and uh, next we have investment in the infrastructure so like we already said investment in the infrastructure will help us to reduce the regional disparities and thereby we can attract a lot of in investment from other parts of the world so it will eventually create a lot of employment opportunities and uh, it can successfully rise the living standard of the people and also helps in reducing the income inequality in that way we have a national infrastructure pipeline project and uh, it mainly focuses on rural area thereby it will uh, generate employment and uh, ensures rural development and the next important step can be taken is promoting or supporting small and medium enterprises and local innovations so this will be an inclusive step thereby we can ensure the participation and the development of people in every level of the society and uh, and we can promote the economic growth and for this we can establish district level production centers by leveraging local resources and uh, thereby it will create uh, jobs for the people in that locality and also will create employment opportunity and stimulate regional economies and coming to the challenges the first major challenge is implementation challenges that includes leakages in the welfare scheme corruption and this will affect the in effectiveness of the government measures and the second one will be structural inequalities that includes deep-rooted caste gender norms in the society and also regional disparities within the country can hinder equal access to opportunities for everyone and the third challenge will be digital divide the best example we have is limited access to the digital infrastructure in the rural areas hampers financial inclusion and educational initiatives so in this topic we discussed what is income inequality and we also discussed certain statistics related to income inequality and then we saw what are the key reasons behind the income inequalities and uh, then we discussed what are the key initiatives taken by the government and what are the key initiatives can be taken to reduce the income inequality so in this background try to answer this main question the question is income inequality has been persistent challenge in india's socio-economic landscape discuss the major causes for the income inequality in india and uh, suggest measures to address them so it is a 15 mass question and you have to write around 250 words so to answer this question first we have to understand the key words in this uh, question first one is income inequality and it is asking about the persistent challenge in uh, in in india's socio-economic landscape and the major causes and measures to address them try to answer this question and uh, post it in the comment box we will review and reply for that 
look at this newspaper article taken from the lime in a carbon credit trading system will help only if it is designed well so this article is talking about the carbon credit trading system why we are discussing it today because carbon credit trading system or the implementation of carbon credit trading system was one of the key announcements of 2024 union budget in this background let us discuss more about this from the mains point of view before moving into the discussion we have to understand what is mean by carbon credit so carbon credit can be simply defined as tradable permits or certificates which represents right to emit carbon dioxide or any gases equivalent to carbon dioxide and we have to understand one carbon credit is equal to one ton of carbon dioxide so how the system works we will explain this with a with an example imagine that there are two companies company a and company b and after assessment there will be a cap or a fixed uh, limitation in the emission of uh, emission from these two companies uh, based on the historical production based on the vulnerability of the region there will be a cap or a limitation will be fixed around both companies so company a can emit up to 10 ton of carbon while company b can emit only up to 7 ton of carbon so we have to understand one carbon credit is equal to one ton of carbon dioxide company a can emit up to 10 ton of carbon dioxide but after the production company a produced only seven ton of carbon dioxide but unfortunately company b produced 10 ton of carbon dioxide so what happens is this company a has a remaining of three carbon credits but company b exceeded the limit therefore company a will sell the credit to company b through carbon market thereby it will help in maintaining overall equilibrium in the market so this is how the system works so now we will discuss one by one so how this carbon credit can be obtained or generated so like i said it can be obtained through reducing the carbon emission how can we reduce this carbon emission through developing renewable or green projects through reforestation or through producing energy efficiency production facilities and next one is measurement like we already said one credit is equal to one metric ton of carbon dioxide and a trading we already saw how it is traded in the carbon market certified credits are bought and sold on carbon markets to offset emissions and thereby caps total emission in the market so we we saw here the company a sold the remaining three carbon credit to company b thereby both companies maintained the equilibrium overall equilibrium in the market and before issuing the carbon credit the companies or the projects of that companies will be verified to ensure that the reductions are real and and the sale of carbon credits is measurable and thereby we can reduce the misuse of this carbon credit and how can we use this carbon credit in the beginning itself is uh, in the definition itself we discussed that carbon credit is a permit to emit carbon dioxide or any equivalent gases of carbon dioxide how this carbon credit trading system works first there will be a cap setting we already saw the company a can emit up to 10 ton of carbon while company b can emit only up to 7 ton of carbon so before the production itself the cap or the limitation will be there so to reduce the ultimate objective of this is to reduce the emission of overall greenhouse gas emission and second one is allocation that is the carbon credits are distributed based on the cap they can be also sold free or auction and coming to the trading we already saw the entities below their allowance can sell the excess credit to others exceeding their limits so in that case we saw the company a did not exceed the limit while the company b exceeded the limit thereby the company a sold their remaining three credit to company b and next one is complaints that is the comp entities engaged in the production must hold enough credits to cover emissions till for a specific period of time otherwise they will be facing heavy penalties or legal actions and uh, coming to the support for global goals so like i said the carbon credits are tradable right therefore the revenue generated from this carbon credits can be used to finance green development and green projects and the next one is carbon credit system will be helpful in meeting global targets that is certain organizations will have ambitious projects and they can use this carbon credit facility or this carbon credit trading system to ensure the overall equilibrium in the market as well as in the environment and from the profit they made from those ambitious projects can be used to promote green developments and projects and now we are going to see what are the benefits of this carbon credit trading system first one is cost effective reduction that is the companies are allowed to reduce carbon emissions where they are cheapest to do so and this will eventually help in lowering overall cost and the next important benefit will be market incentives the trading system the carbon credit trading system will encourage investment in the low carbon projects and also it creates financial incentives for the companies to innovate and adopt cleaner energy technologies and uh, next important benefit will be flexibility so we already saw how much flexible the system is that is through uh, sailing or through borrowing this carbon credit the companies are not much compromising on their goals so therefore the carbon credit trading system will offer various methods for reduction 
of greenhouse gas emission and the next important benefit will be cap on emissions so the main objective of this uh, carbon credit so the main objective of this carbon credit trading facility is to maintain overall equilibrium so it limits total emissions through capping the total number of permits is currently available and the next benefit is market efficiency that is a carbon credit system will use market mechanism for finding most effective ways to reduce emission now we are going to discuss what are the challenges associated with this system first one is the, the complex nature of the trading system so design and administration will be complex at the same time monitoring the uh, carbon market is also very challenging and second one is market volatility that is fluctuating carbon prices can create uncertainty in the market and therefore it will also affect the investment in the clean technology so we already know that the revenue generated out of this carbon credit will be turned for investing for investing in the green or clean technology but due to the fluctuating prices of this carbon it will eventually affect the investment in the clean technology and the next challenge is potential exploitation that is the risk of the misuse of loopholes and the practice of unethical trade sometimes you can see the companies under the same owner or a same corporation will be exchanging the credit between them so actually there is no trade is happening but apparently they are showing that they are doing the carbon trading so this is the unethical practice of carbon trading and the next challenge will be iniquity issues that is carbon credit if the carbon credit facility is not properly designed and implemented then it will affect the poor communities and the next important challenge is the non additional projects some projects may not deliver actual emission redu uh, reduction for example if certain projects may not uh, emit that much harmful gases or greenhouse gases but this projects will be utilized or misused by certain entities by making false claims to enjoy the benefit of the carbon credit facility and the next problem will be counting that is the multiple counting here also the entities will make false claims regarding the emission reduction that is the risk of counting the same emission reduction by multiple companies so here also the companies can make false claims and the next challenge will be about the verification and monitoring that is inadequate monitoring and verification can lead to issuing credit for unverified projects that are not meeting the standard to get the credit facility these are the major challenges associated with the carbon trade facility so in this background try to answer this main question the question is discuss the concept of carbon trading as a mechanism to control global warming and what are its advantages and disadvantages so you have to understand the directional word here is discuss so you have to discuss both the advantages and disadvantages and you have to explain what is the concept of carbon trading and like we said carbon trading we have to you can use the uh, map or the diagram that we used in the discussion in the answer paper and you have you can through that you can explain the mechanism of this carbon trading and how it is going to benefit in controlling the global warming so what is global warming global warming is constant rise in the average temperature of earth that is known as global warming so the through carbon trading we are reducing the carbon emission the carbon emission is one of the uh, gases which is responsible for the global warming and uh, carbon uh, trading not only includes carbon it also includes any gases equivalent to carbon so therefore through that we are also regulating other green uh, gases greenhouse gases that are uh, causing the global warming so in this with this idea try to answer this question and uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages what, that also we discussed in this video so with these ideas try to answer this question and it is a 15 marks question and uh, you have to write around 250 words write this answer and post it in the comment section we will review and reply for your answer with this we are coming to the conclusion for the newspaper analysis if you like the video hit the like button and give your feedbacks as comments and share this content with your friends to make the competition more healthy and before leaving this channel don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive the on-time update thank you have a nice day